Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Discriminating Gamer, the board game review show that asks, did you ever hear about that samurai that was dishonored and refused to commit seppuku? He didn't show any guts. Ladies and gentlemen, today we're going to go ahead and take a look at Commands and Colors, Samurai Battles from GMT Games. In Commands and Colors, Samurai Battles from GMT Games, two players take on the roles of various feuding warlords as they attempt to strive for domination and destroy the other's army in this kooky Commands and Colors game. Now, if you're familiar with Commands and Colors, I'm not going to get too much into the weeds, into the basic rules. Suffice it to say, uh, on your turn, you play a command card. You play a command card, and this goes ahead and activates one section of the battlefield, either the center, the left flank, or the right flank, or combinations and variations thereof, and you can activate your units on that side. Now, your units, of course, are blocks. Um, usually, it's about three to four blocks in a unit, and uh, there are also your hit points. As you lose blocks, uh, you still have the same kind of level of strength, but once they are all gone, then you have lost that unit, and your enemy claims a flag. And depending on the scenario, how many flags they claim will be the, kind of the, the determinant of victory. Now this game introduces a few new concepts into your Commands and Colors games. First of all, uh, you have dragon cards. Now you have dragon cards that are going to pop up in the game, and you uh, will gain these, uh, you get some at the beginning, and then over the course of the game you'll gain some as well. And these dragon cards essentially allow you to do all sorts of kooky tricks and play tricks on your enemies. They do cost you fortune and honor tokens, honor and fortune tokens, and I'll talk more about that in a minute. Um, so there is a cost associated with them, but you can go ahead and play these cards, and they let you do all sorts of fun and interesting tricks on your enemy, and give you certain advantages throughout the game. Now one of the other big concepts here is the fortune and honor tokens. Now if ever you are forced to retreat a unit, you have to pay a token, uh, a fortune and honor token, an honor and fortune token to the pool. If you can't do that, then you have to actually start losing. You roll die and you start losing units, uh, you, losing blocks from the board. That is your men are deserting you because they don't think you have honor, which <laughs> you don't have the tokens, right? Now at the end of every turn you have a choice. You can either take two uh, Honor and Fortune tokens or you can take one Dragon card. And as I say, you can later spend your uh, Honor and Fortune tokens to activate some of those Dragon cards. Now also too, in battle, uh, when you roll die, one of the symbols that can pop up is the Honor and Fortune symbol. When that symbol pops up, you get to take one of those tokens. Now also again, in Commands and Colors, you're, you're rolling the die and depending on, you're trying to roll the symbol of your target. You know, this is, these are different shapes and colors. And if you roll those specific shapes and colors of your enemy, they lose those uh, units. But you also have the swords, which are kind of a wild uh, card here. And these wild uh, swords, uh, but they only work in certain ways. For instance, infantry is not going to take out cavalry. There's kind of a, an order of operations for what can take out what with the swords. This makes certain units harder to kill than others with certain units. So you're kind of always got that in the back of your mind. Uh, what is going to be easier to kill with what? Now the game comes with over 40 scenarios, so you're going to look at the specific victory conditions of your scenarios, which usually of course is defeating uh, a number of enemy units and getting a number of flags. And if you have completed those specific uh, victory conditions, then you win Commands and Colors Samurai Battles. Okay, so there's, there's more going on here. I'm giving you just kind of the bare bones because at this point, hopefully, most people are familiar with how a Commands and Color game works. If not, I've got other uh, videos that deal with that. I've also got a playthrough of Commands and Colors Napoleonics, so you can kind of see how that works, uh, the basic system works. But it's a very easy game, and that's one of the great things about Commands and Colors. They're not hard games to learn and to jump into. If you're somebody who is interested in wargaming but you have no idea where to start, this is where you start, a Commands and Colors game. They are the best 
in, in my opinion, they are the ultimate gateway game into war gaming. And there's still enough meat and choice and fun here for, I think, heavier gamers to still really enjoy a game like this. Um, some of these games, I think, are at the intersection of war games and, and more conventional board games, so that's why I think they're so easy to get into. Uh, now, Samurai Battles is, first of all, 40 scenarios. <coughs> 40 scenarios. That is freaking awesome. That is a ton of content, a ton of replayability for this game. So that right there is freaking awesome. Now, i got to tell you, um, the particular theme of this game, Samurais and Feudal Japan, I'm a historian, a professional historian, and I am not overly familiar with this time period. Um, you know, my most of the stuff I do is World War II and what have you. I mean, I know a little bit about Feudal Japan, but it's just not, you know, individual battles and stuff really don't mean that much to me. Um, so in that sense, I, I, I found it harder to connect with this game kind of on a thematic level. But as I always say, the game is the thing, and the game here is so much fun. Um, I got to tell you, though, the 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 those system of honor tokens. It's it's you're always thinking, I need to get more honor tokens because I don't want to get caught flat-footed, and that becomes very scary as the game progresses. But also too, you want some of those dragon cards because some of them are freaking awesome. I'm playing this game with Zach. So I play the ambush card. I get to fight with more die than uh, he does, and I get a hit first. And then, like, right after that, I had another dragon card that said it was like a ninja, and you can go ahead and spend the tokens to go through the discard pile and grab another card. So I went ahead and I grabbed that ambush again. So for the rest of the game, he's really scared to close with me because he knows I can just play that card and beat him. And so it was, it was, it's a good kind of bluff and double bluff thing going on there. And I really like that. Um, but there's so many fun things that come up with those dragon cards, and this whole honor system really adds a new dimension to the game. Uh, the only negative I have to say about this game is a negative that I have with virtually every GMT Commands and Colors games, and that is the stickering. <sighs> stickering is awful. It's awful. It's, it just takes forever. I wish these things came pre-stickered or there was some other way to do it. And I love the wooden blocks. I mean, I love playing with the wooden blocks here. But that stickering just takes forever. It is so tedious. The good news is once it's done, it's done. You don't have to, to do it again or worry about it again. But, um, you know, get your friend to do it. I did it all by myself. But get a friend to help you with it and it'll, it'll, it'll be done. It's worth it. <laughs> the stickering, as tedious as it is, it's worth it when you play the game. The game is amazing. I have absolutely no hesitation whatsoever to recommend uh, Commands of Color Samurai Battles, one of the best games I've played this year so far, uh, one of the best games of 2021 so far, and uh, just just have a ball. Uh, buy it. Thank you once again for joining us today on The Discriminating Gamer. As always, we ask you to please leave a comment for us on YouTube, on Board Game Geek, on our Facebook page, or on thediscriminatinggamer.com. We ask you to please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and follow us on Twitter. We'd ask you to give us a thumb on Board Game Geek. That really helps us out a lot as well. And if you like military history and books on history, I recommend you check out my other channel, Cody Carlson, PhD. Thank you once again, ladies and gentlemen. And let me ask you, did you ever hear about that dyslexic samurai? He was dishonored, so he had to commit Sudoku. Please somebody help me. Again, and I don't know where.